Let's try the big ones from Cab. Oh my God, they are bright as anything. Right, we're back in Jones's outside workshop. Got sun out today, so start doing this, probably end up raining. Right, got a light bar. Now I've had this light bar ages, right? And I've just never got around to fitting it because there's not much uh, mounting points at the top of my van, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. But first we'll have a quick two to this. Right. So it's from Ogsbeam again, and it's the, I think it's a 42 inch of this one, which goes across, so you've got like a box of bits, tons of wires, usual shit with it, different looms and stuff like that. It's got a little switch panel there, which I'm not gonna use, I don't think. Book of Destructions, and then light bar. Now this one has got, you get it up without dropping it. The two, it's got the main lights, and beside it, it's like a dual bar, but you've also got daytime running lights as well. So you've got the orange and the white lights. Not too sure how it's going to work like. And I'm going to have to look at how I'm going to mount it as well. Should be straightforward. I think you get some mounting brackets with it. And then box. The orc. Yeah, there's a lot of hardware here as well. So you've got a ton of bolts and brackets. We've got two more brackets here. Different L brackets. Ooh. Got some L brackets as well, which I might use. Those for mounting. Let's go and have a look up top and see where we're going to mount this bloody thing. Right, as you can see on top of our van here, on that side, the unistruct doesn't reach because you've got the bracket for the uh, awning. And on this side, I ended up trimming this short because the profile of the van comes in here, so you couldn't really get it to this edge point here. So it's where I'm going to mount this. It's going to be a fun. So, find this in garage. What's well, clean up in there, but it's galvanised, so it's not too bad. And then my, my idea is mounting that to the other side on the awning bit, and then probably stepping this end up with a, probably another piece of uni strut, just so it takes off the body of the van there. So the light bar shouldn't be too heavy because it's quite long, and it should keep it off that body weight. But looking at that, though, I don't know if it's going to be too far back that light bar. But if I put it too far forward. Then I don't know if you're going to get wind noise off it. So another mention idea would be utilise them screws down the bottom there, the back of the awning bracket, which brings up to that line there. But what I'd have to do is extend this bit to here, put another piece on top. don't know if it looks shit at all. That would have been in a better position, but I think that would look tidier. On the, I think what I'll do, I'll get these cut up. So I'll trim this one down to this length here, get a piece of unit strut, put that on, and then I'll put light bar to it, and we'll see what that looks like. So if you get that feeling that you wish you'd built a proper roof rack. Right, so that's what it's got line up like. So I've managed to get it where it's inside the bracket on the awning. And then on this section here, this will move back because I've got to take into account that bit. So I'll take this little block out, shuffle this back, and that should line up tight with that. So it's not too far back and it's not too far forward where I don't think it's going to cause wind interference. I'm hoping that this bracket is high enough to get the um, light bear on. So I'm going to pull the light bear up now and see what it looks like. And it better bloody fit. That's going to be quite close that. So it weighs that up there and it looks like that's it's going to be low. So if we wedge that up a touch only with the mounting pieces at the back. It's going to be tight. So I think what I need to do first is get this mounted on that bracket and see where it lines up to. Right, it's so one back at light, but I've just lined up with these holes temporarily, right? so I'm just testing them. And just drop some uh, nuts into there. And I'm just going to stick these on. Right, so that's them in there now, just for grip that bar on. So what we'll do, we'll take this up and I'll see what that clearance is to bodywork. I think we're going to be quite tight, to be fair. So that's that bit fast up at back but as you can see at front they're not camera you're actually catching so that's gonna have to come up a bit more that i've upgraded this angle iron because the other one was shite it was just too thin and it weren't really structurally solid really just been a tighter so i've got this one now it's 40 mil high this one it's slotted all the way through and that gives me the option then of adding other stuff to it if i want to but even then, I've still got to drill some holes into it just to bring the light to a bit higher, so it's just off the bodywork. And I've got to allow for a bit of bounce as well, you know, on the light. So I'll get this drilled out, mount the light, and I'll see how much clearance I've got underneath. I'm hoping for a good 10 mil, 
I don't want the length too high though because I could have just basically mounted it to the van bodywork and put some rib nuts in, made it easier. But if I change my mind or I want to do a different light or something or something happens that light, I don't want it to be like a permanent fixture on the van. So I can just whip this bar off, whip it off the bar and then put some else on if it, you know, if you need to or whatever. Might even be there in the next 10 years, you don't know, do you? But it gives me that option then. Plus I can add some bits to this as well. So that's my plan anyway, so let's get these drilled, get that light mounted, make sure everything fits as it should, then we're painting, lad. Right, so I've sprayed this bar up now. <clears throat> this is going to go on top of this one here, so I'm going to take this out. That little block I've done, I'm going to reuse the end caps, plunk this all back down again, and then we're going to test the bar, which I've sprayed down there. And then we'll see if this bar fits on here now as well. I've put these um, supports on it here, just to give it a bit more rigidity, because it was quite flexy on it, like, so I'm seeing how this pans out in a minute. What do you think so? I should have just made a full roof rack for this. Would have made my life so much easier. Save them bad boys. I think what I'll do as well, I'll clean that up and give it a bit of a spray. But I want my end cap. Stick that back on there. If it'll fit. I might do is bolt this one further forward because it doesn't need to be as far back this one. So I need a cam, one of them cam lock things in there, one of them in there. I need another one for the front. Do you know, it's like playing with my car, no sets this. Stacking bits on, or Lego, should I say. Lego for big boys. The Unistrut. Besides that cross membrane, <coughs> my throat sounds a bit rough today, man. Full of it. Summer and you get a bloody cold, that's all that about. Right, so this, I'm gonna have to get another one um, um, of them shut lock things, put that in, and then that should bring that up a bit level. And then look at the other side. I think what I'm gonna have to do first is go over the other side and then look how I'm gonna fix that because I'm gonna have to drill into the, um, the awning support to mount this on. So, I'm mount it on this side. No, I'll chamfer a bit more off that and then take that in. And I might be able to get a bolt straight through that aluminium profile there. One through front here and then one through back there. That should be ample that for all that. Right, so I'll scotch a little bit off that, take that in a bit more. We'll drill into this. Right, so that bit's mounted on here now and that is absolutely solid that. I was going to put another one through the back of here, but to be honest, I don't think I'm going to need it. So we're going to get the other side uh, bolted up now and then this will have to line it, bring it over a touch. It's amazing how much shite you need when you're doing a little job. All that crap there, just for that one bolt. So if I finish this bit off here, <coughs> just putting these in, lock this one down. Right, spray up these bloody uh, fastenings as well. Right, so that's the uh, easy bit done, building all that crap up. So redoing all that frame there, mounting all that, building that bloody thing. We we'll have to work out now whether we go through the cable on that side or bring the cable back down to here, and then I'm going to come into this top locker here, right above here. So I might get a scan strut cable uh, gland for that one, and then run the power leads through there, and that's got to be the easiest way of getting into a van then and down the bloody pillars. Right, so that's that all prepped now. What I've done with cable, I've just put a couple of tie wraps on the back edge here and brought it up over this lip here. Hence why I step these things back. And I put a bag over the plug as well because if it uh, good old English weather, if it lashes down, I'll get caught out, no end of problems. So that's all ready now, prepped, waiting now for that cable gland rock up, which should be here tomorrow. And then I can start transferring then all the cables. So I might have a look under the bonnet and see what access I've got because I think it's going to be down the left hand side where I can get through to the, where I'm going to put the fuse panel. Right, let's get inside now. Right, so with that light installed on the roof now, I've got to get a cable in this van. There was a couple of options which I looked at. There was one where you can get like um, a windscreen rubber which has a channel in the corner and you put it down the side of the windscreen and then you can run it straight under the van which is dead easy to do. But the problem you've got, you've got a stretch of about 500 mil between the top of the roof and it's got to come down it and yeah you could paint it or put some sort of channel in that but i don't think it would look right and it that just wasn't wasn't what i wanted to look like i want to try and keep it minimalist as possible that's reason why i wanted the light as low as possible i don't want the lights sticking up too high and also my daughter likes mcdonald's and i like mcdonald's so i can fit under 2.7 so if i add any more height to that 
going in queuing up, aren't we? So with the OS beam light, it comes with a full loom. Basically, this one, you can just plug that into the light now as it is. You've got your two relays there, which are 40 amp relays, and two battery terminals, and it's fused at the end as well. Now, if you was doing it in like a, like a Lamb Rover or something like that, you know what I mean, you, you didn't want it going through a switch panel or anything, you can direct wire it, and then you've got a control switch on the other end of it, which one is for your main lights, and the other one is for your white DRLs. Now, one thing I found quite strange was the amber DRL, because it's a dual DRL light, is on a separate line, right? But they don't give you much to go with on that one. And it doesn't go the full loom, so I'm not too sure why that's the case, why they've done it like that. There's probably I'm missing something or there's a reason behind it, but for me, that I want to be able to select between the white and the orange, you know, amber DRLs. So I would have thought you'd have a, a third switch on here, which would give you that option for the white DRL, but it doesn't. So oh, the only thing I need at this loom, right, is the plug, because these are waterproof plugs, right? So when it's connected up on the roof, because the plug's quite, the lead's quite short to that, um, you want it waterproofed and that. I mean, I was thinking about cutting that plug off and then running the wire straight through the van and just putting it like a, a proper connection point on that, a waterproof connection point, but there's no point. So I think what I'm going to do with this loom is basically strip out the bits I need. We'll keep that, that'll be up on top of the roof behind the rack, but we'll have to extend the amber DRL. And I only want out of this pretty much the top section. So where this goes into the relays, I don't even need the switch. So where that goes into the relay there, I only need the three wires. Um, for some random reason, they've gone from red, black, white to that to red, black, yellow. Yellow one will be the um, the white DRL. So I'm gonna cut them off and use that and basically just get that wired through the van along the A pillars on the window, underneath the dash and then straight through to under a bonnet. And the reason why I'm doing it that way and I'm not using the relays is because this company's reached out and funnily enough, I was always fitting um, a light beam on that. I was going to use my old switching panel on that one, but the problem is it doesn't have the toggle function on the, on the old panel. They reached out and said, would I be interested in a switching panel? I said, yeah, do you know what? I'll try it, see how they go. And to be fair to them, right, this ain't too bad actually. It's a company called Maple, right? And um, they do like loads of switching panels and stuff like that. You box the usual stuff for these things, you know what I mean? Six, this, I, I went for a six gang one, right? Because they do six and eight. And they, I think they did a 10 as well, which is a lot of switches that. But because I'm gonna use this solely for lighting, and these are gonna be, this is gonna be connected up to the vehicle side of it, not the ledger system. I wanted something what I can put in the front and leave it alone. A different system from what I've got up there. And when I, when I looked at this, I thought, you know, it's quite quirky that actually. And it's similar size to the other switching panel I've used. And the buttons feel you know, quite good on that. But this is a six, an IP68 rated waterproof as well. Um, like I said, you can have these outside if you wanted to on a boat or something like that, but the brill. So you get your switching panel right, you get your looms, the wiring and stuff. But this one, right. You know these right with buttons and you have to print stickers out and all that stuff. <clears throat> this one I thought was quite mad because you get like a bag of buttons, right? And say you pick one, so courtesy lights or stuff like that. You know, it's got tons of little. Oh, oh I did have tons of stuff. I'll pick that off in a minute. And basically, these push in. So you push them into a rubber thing, and then you got your button in it. I mean, I'm not going to push it in like because I'm not going to get a bloody thing out if I try. You get your usual stuff again. 60 amp breaker with it. We're not going to need that. And a lot of wiring at the bottom. Do you know what I mean? You've got terminal wires. You've got loads of these now everywhere. Fuses. Piggyback fuse. I think there's a piggyback one in there. Yep. You've got a piggyback. That one's basically for the ignition on. Some more spare wires, random stuff. Again, solid state fuse box on these. So I'll open this up. It's solid metal that and your cable entries come out at the back here on that one so when you mount it you can have a mount it going that way and your cables come up into the back of it or vice versa or go into it and sort of lose them screws and inside solid state relays now that's quite tidy that actually so you've got 10 amp 20 amp 20 amp 30 and 40 on that one uh, and 30 on that one sorry and then you've got your pods and negs what come into it. So it's, it's quite a tiny little box, really, to refer to them. <clears throat> and this is going to be mounted under the bonnet. This will be permanent insulation, this, because when I look at getting some more lights, because I'm, I'm looking at the laser lights for the front, 
Bankman funds are low because they're not cheap. And um, this will be ideal because ben, a base I can just cut the laser lamps in and then the wiring, then I can run straight to that under the bonnet. No messing about and happy days. I can run it on my switching panel then on that one. So I think we'll get that um, a place for that phone under the bonnet, run some cable, and then I'll forget these lights up and running. Underneath here now, you've got a fuse panel on this van. This is where like the secondary battery goes on these. And if you look on this one, I've got a spur port which can go across here with a bridge. I can bridge a, a big fuse on that one onto the at the back here. You've got a grounding point here, and there's another one further up. So there's plenty of places that ground it as well. That's where the pods will be mounted. So it'll go somewhere around here anyway. I think that's probably the best place to put it. So I've got access to it all the time and that. So all I need for it run from here is pause and neg onto these terminals. And then just at the back, I don't know if you can get in focus that one. Yeah, just up there. You can see the grommet hook goes into the cab side of it, and that as well push the wires through, and then run the wires around the back. So it's turned into a bit of a miss real at this light, but once this is in and it's done, I've got a separate uh, switching system then at front, which I can use, you know, for other lights and stuff. Because laser lights, they're going to cut into here, into that. So it's going to be dead easy for me to just punch the wires through, with it around this box here, connect it to that box, and it's straight on the switching cab. So that should be an easy job, he says. <coughs> God, my, my voice is going, I can't speak. Right, so I think we'll mount this, pull them cables through, and then see how we get on. This is the loom I've made up anyway for going for these lights. I've kept the waterproof plugs on the end there and some um, cable sheathing round here. Just have to make sure this is sealed up at end when I put it on so we don't get no water travelling down it. And then I've just got some automotive tape on end, just for as it's going through the bodywork so it's not chaffing on anything or anything like that. And then that one is the yellow wire which I've extended, which is the um, orange DRLs, which are gonna be on a separate switch. What I'm gonna put, I'm gonna drill into the roof, I'm gonna put um, the cable entry on this side, because on that side, there's no units for it to drop into, because the overhead lock is slightly forward on the on the van. There's no really work and put the cable through that without it going into the cab and looking unsightly. So this will go in where the exit locker is underneath the van. So I can go into the locker, and basically just pull that cable through, run, run it around the, the headliner, in theory, and then um, turn into the bodywork. So we're going to use these scan truck cable um, entry things, these brillies tire. They just suit so tidy when they're done. Pretty much right, you've got that. You've got your different diameter bungs in it there, and you've got your weatherproof strip. Now I've put a bit of sticker on it anyway, but it's got a 10mm one in there, so when your cable's in that, it basically just looks like that, and it's just so much neater. And that's where it's going. I need to drill this now. Cable's 10 mil, which is ideal for that all, which is 10 mil on that one. <clears throat> the gasket you can put, you can drill up to a 25 mil hole on that, but I don't think I want to go 25 mil, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to do a 30 mil hole on that, which gives me enough wiggle room on the, on the um, cable. And then I'm going to stick one of these bungs in. And I'm hoping that doesn't sit too proud. And that then will squish on there. And that's just basically for it to protect the cable. You know, from the bodywork, so you don't chaff on it. I'll see how, how low that profile sits when it's in there, though. Right, let's get it drilled. Cable accessories, these things, are, I've said it probably said it loads of times, but they are bob on. So basically, just drill the hole straight through there now. I've fed this through, and it's actually come out in the uh, overhead locker, which is a bonus. That's where I've managed to get it through. Fit my bung on, get that in there, cut an hole in that, then start feeding all the bits in for the scan strut, and then feed the cable onto the end of here, and then try and get the cable in. And feeding this on just makes sure it's the right way around because it's there's not much giving it. Just get this round up to end it loom and then hopefully just start trying to get fed in the body with it. So just get it onto that bit there, the waterproofing bit, that's the bit that's got to be outside the van that one. And the automotive tape will be inside. That'll just stop it chaffing. Got little screws in there on that one. That is absolutely solid. These are the best cable uh, glands I've seen. Really these. Basically just get your top piece now. Slide that down. Two little tabs up front. They're locking. Screw that bad boy down. Mint them. Try to tidy that looks. No, I just need to tie up these wires on here now. Right, I'll do this bit and then we'll get into the cab. That's gonna be a mess. Right, I'm not gonna lie, that is probably the worst cable run I've ever done. That was savage. That's another one, what should be done before you build the van. So cable run, right, I'll show you now where this has gone. I came in at the top of the ceiling here, and uh, my plan was to come inside this unit, right, and then punch it through. So I drill the hole, and I managed to just keep it just 
inside the roof, roof lining bit on here and then pushed it through into this unit here. So I need to fasten that off here actually. That's my cable there. That needs pinning back up top here. And um, if I can, I'll try and get it on back under the roof and run it all along that bit there. But for now, I'll deal with that in a minute. But the gap coming through this bit here was about that big. Well, that's a good 10 mil cable plus an extra one as well, which was a killer. Then it ran all the way along, it goes all the way in the unit, it goes all the way along the unit into this corner piece here. So I've had to take all this off, run the cable into that so I can get in to the headlining arch bit here. So on here, so that cable then runs inside that, pull this away. I didn't need to take this off on here, like, because you can just get your cable in behind it. Push it around the back of the handle, down this section, down into here, bloody gimbal, don't follow me, into here, through that bit there, and then underneath, you've managed to get me hand into it. Let's see if I can get a picture of this one. And then up there, so this little perch bit here, and that leads straight to your rubber and the engine bay. So that cable's run through that. Now we'll whiz around here. And then it comes through. It's that rubber grommet at the back there. There's a nipple on the top end, on the top one. I don't know if you can get any good picture on that one. Get it, get my camera in. Yes, yeah, so there's a nipple at the top there. Just do a slice in that nipple there. You can run your cable straight through. So then cables all run out here. And that's how much spur I've got left. So I was quite lucky with that. And then my fuse box, I've mounted on here. Now, I was wondering where I'm going to put it, but I'm having it there anyway, so it's easy because I can get my cables to the back into it because the design of this, I'm not, I think the design could be better. Where they've got the cables coming out the back edge of it, they should be better coming out the bottom. So like, say, say this is the bottom here, you're better off taking a groove out of those so the cables can run straight in because they've got to come in the back and curl round, which I think is too tight on the cable. It's dead severe, like, and for the size of cables you're using, it's a bit, yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't think the design is very good on that. So for future mods, I think, cut that out and give you better access on that. And it gives you more flexibility then with that box where you put it in. Negatives connected up there onto the ground on the van and then positive wired into the fuse box here. And basically, I've not put a fuse in there yet. So that's just on that terminal there. Maximum capacity for this box, so it's 60 amp, yeah. So maximum money is 60 amp, so it's got a 60 amp fuse in here on that, and that fuse will go on that one. Don't worry, I'll get rid of that now, look. But honestly, absolutely savage, that cable going through there. That was probably the hardest cable I've ever run in this van. Never again. It was just horrible. <laughs> horrible. Got no skin left on my hands, bleeding, cuts everywhere. Just for pull cable and rest, and I put my hands in place, I didn't think I'd get in it. I bet I could get up a set of handcuffs now, make sure tight spots have been in. Not they've been in handcuffs like, but... Right, so the next one is now, cut these wires, get them into that switch box, and then we're sorted. All done. Oh, the cables for the bloody switching panel. I've not fed them through. Oh, I could have joined onto the cable and pulled it through. Right, so this switch panel now, I was going to go through this bit here, but the switch panel hangs quite low, so it looks shit. So I'm not going to touch that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in one of these here. So I'll drill the ice end out of that one there. This switch panel will be glued onto that. I think it'll be a bit tight. It gives me a bit of a storage bit there as well. Oh, I think I need add anything to it. But it's a disposable part, really, that. And whereas that, will be a pain in the ass to try and replace that if you ever change your mind. So the plan is, cable down there, straight down back. And you see daylight there. Through here. Back over here. Just built all this back up as well. Unbelievable. Back down here. All the way down. I threw my little cheeky hole at the back there because that end has to plug in the box there and the plug end which is on there now has to go in the back of the switch panel but i've just thought as well i also need a 12 volt ignition as well reach so that switch panel wire through now that's a tight fit that jesus switch panel will go up here so that'll go in back in there that brought that and then that switch panel then will be mounted on there looks a bit tired doesn't it it's easy access for me then flicky switches and stuff and it's out the road from there so the next one i've got now is the ignition live but that lap extend that's only tiny right bomb site for all for fitting a bloody um switch live and fuse box so that pull seats up getting to the top there where few switch live is on that one and then run it through under flooring all the way up there, back up the air, back out through bulkhead. All right, pig sty. And snap my pliers as well. Got it. 
So all I've got to do now is trim big cable off, stick switch live on, stick controller thing on, and then we'll see if we can light the street up. It's either going to work this and it's going to look meant, or it's going to be like a bastard candle, or it's just not going to work. What are we thinking? With my track record, something's gone tits up somewhere on it, especially with all that faff. So we'll get these bits wired in there and we'll test it. A bit of time we've done that, probably been dark anyway. Right, so 60 amp fuse has gone in there. All these are wired in at the bottom. You can see that there. A bit of an arse really, because you've got to take this out to wire all these in. I've sorted all the wires out, I've not done them all yet. I'll tidy all this up first, I want to test it first to see if that wiring's any good. Clean the bomb site out. Right, so no power yet, so let's put ignition on. Ignition on. Start it up. So, not too sure, I've not read instructions on this yet. So I'll have to find out how to run it. So if I've wired it right, that should be one, two, three. So that should be main light. That should be the white one. And that should be the amber one. Let's try it first, we'll do amber. You can change the colors of these as well on that. So what I'll do, I'll read instructions and we'll go through it and we'll change all the colors of these. But I like it where they're not lit up permanently all the time as well. Cause at night time, that'd be dead bright that, so. But I look at the instructions, so let's try amber first. So panel works anyway. What are you saying? Oh, okay. Get in there. That's the amber running light. So we'll turn that one off. Try the daytime running one. Oh yeah. Absolutely mint. Oh it goes the PS3 resistance. Let's turn that one off. And turn number one on. Tell me oh I can see that light up already. <laughs> Daylight there, next door's lit up. Look at that. Absolute result. Tough to bits at that to work first time actually. I'm not gonna lie, it's been a slog that getting all that wiring in. An absolute slog. Without doing any damage to the van and trying to re-trim it all, get it under the trims and that, it's just got no skin left on my hands, my mommy's skin's gone on my knuckles and everything. So next job, I think it's gonna be morning, is tidy this bomb site up because it's an absolute mess. Read instructions, find out what I've got to do with this control panel. Because I've still not learned how to use it yet because there's loads of functions. You can have strobe functions and all that stuff, which I thought was quite good. It's quite good because I'm just a big kid, you know what I mean? Just flashing lights down there and there. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> but anyway, so I'll learn how to do that and then I'll get some nighttime footage. We'll send the drone up and we'll have a look, see what they actually look like and see how bright they are. Right, let's get this shit all tied up first. Right, so these instructions, right? The simplish to run through. Wiring diagrams, it's just straightforward, you know what I mean? But the control panel working mode. Now on this one, right, you've got quite a few modes on it. So you've got toggle mode, momentary mode, pulse mode, and SOS. I'm not too sure what SOS mode is on that one, but I think you can send like a signal out to me if you've got something attached to your van, like a module or something, but these have already got SOS built in, so we don't need that. But the pulse mode would be quite good because you get like pulse, pulse, pulse. So if you can get like, um, you know, quite a few sets of lights on the front there and you're just flickering on, it's, it's childish but it's there anyway and it's it doesn't really it, it gives you the basic how to function right but i don't know if it's right or not so i'm going to try it and i'm also going to stick my buttons on as well so i think first things first buttons i'll do some buttons picked a few out here now which i think are like so have a look so a little selection here now of what i've got i think looking that one looks like a cool one that's like the main beam and then we need probably search light so i think these two here look more like you know the um well that could be daytime running light so Main beam, daytime running, and then we do the number one, couldn't we? And we search with amber, I think. What do you think? Yeah, we'll go with them. Right, let's see how easy these are to get in here. They're not as easy as these with one handed. Got to try and get in the rubber bit, and then get the rubber bit right there. Right, also, there we have it. Main beam at the top there. Daylight running lights, the white ones, orange ones, and then I've just done these, og one, og two, og three. When I get me um, other beams on there, I can sw I can swap them out. I think we need to wait for it to go dark now. I've got a couple of little jobs to do. I've got to heat shrink the top where the plugs are. Just delete the factory plugs. I'm not a lover of them, I must admit. Double plugging at the end of a wire is not, doesn't look nice. In hindsight, I should have cut them off and just put one plug on it, but I didn't. 
So I'm gonna heat shrink them up, make sure all them sealed up proper. They're waterproof plugs, but I wanna make sure they seal up proper and then um, tire out the rest of the cables for that. No, I didn't do that. Never shown you how bloody toggle mold, did I? I'm not even color, isn't it, yeah. Wait, try again. Keys back in again, lad. So bottom here now, right, it's saying on off and then your function switch. If you toggle on off two times continuously to enter work setting mode. So if you do it now, on two, right, work mode. Hey, flashing. Indicator blinks 26 times. Don't know why it says 26 times, but it goes 26 times. Press the function key to convert the function. The background light will show the color of the corresponding function. So it's either red for toggle, blue for momentary. So I think when you hold your finger on it, comes on and then goes off. Uh, green for pulsed and SOS. So let's do pulse first. I want to see what pulse looks like on the amber. So when you enter that mode there, it double flashes. So let's do it again. That flashes. See how it's gone green now? So then, blue is momentary. And we'll try that pulse, and we'll try that one pulse as well. See what it does. And then when it stops, then it should work. Are we gonna work? I'll try it on the shape one first, on the amber light first. There we have it, pulsing light. So white pulses, get it. And then we've got the main one. Oh, fucking hell. Is that one pulse on? Better turn off that neighbors will start tripping. <laughs> right, let's wait till it goes dark now. And we'll show you what they look like. And let's see, they're not candles. Here we are at night time. Good idea, right, was putting this switch panel up top here, right? Because when you turn the light on, that is quite bright, that. Now, if that had been down here, I think that would have done me head in that, how bright that was. Because they, they are quite bright then. That's normal lights there now. Crafterman candles. I'll turn them off, right, so we're on side lights. And then I'll put the amber one on first. Oh, I forgot that's in pulse mode. <laughs> now, it's not fully dark yet, neither, so if you just put the um, daylight running lights on. Yeah, that, that's just daylight running, that. So they're bright for what they are. Well, let's try the big ones from cab. Oh, my God. They are bright as anything. Right. Aerial photography. Let's try this now. So these are the side lights on here now, and then I'll put the main beam on, and you'll see they're not too bad. The main beam on the lights and that. Then we'll flick the uh, ambers on to see what they look like. Then we'll do DRLs, the white one, and this bit here now we'll put the big lights on the actual light bar. See how bright this is. Wow. That surprised me that. Now it's narrow field light because I'm between the trees and that, but that is actually the light in the house, which is about 300 meters away. So watch this again now. Look at that, it's unbelievable. That has shocked me how bright they are. And like you say, you can see the tree cover I'm under and they're still projecting out that far. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Tell you what, on an open road, they'll be bright as anything. Right, let's whiz this drone round now and we'll see what they look like. Nighttime flying with the bird goggles on, this is mental this, I tell you. I'm still not even got used to flying this bloody thing yet. So there's our amber DRLs on. Pretty bright tidy between trees. There's the white one. Big ones now, see what these look like. Oh, they're, Jesus, they are bright. Honestly, right, them things are bright. Very, very bright. I am chuffed a bitch with them. Ox beam. They are nice lights. You can't knock it that switchy panel as well. That is a good switchy panel, that, and it functions just how I want it to. Right, pitch black outside. I look like a right dodgy get parked under a load of trees, and my drone doesn't have lights on because it's in a varsity too. So I'm going to find this bloody thing now. See you on the next one.